What's up everybody? It's Sunday and we raced yesterday at trails, uh, one round anyway. Uh, unfortunately, the event got canceled due to rain. Um, but I can show you, <laughs> I can show you what happened leading up to getting there and after we got there. So check this out. The first thing we needed to do Saturday morning was get fuel loaded in the trailer for both cars. Stay, stay, stay. Crap, stay. How am I gonna get in there if you're in there? Remind me to uh, have a staff meeting this week so I can explain to the dogs that navigators come in the cab second. Anyway, once we got our staffing requirements taken care of inside the cab of the tractor, me and Tommy loaded up a drum of alcohol and carried it out to the race car trailer so we were sure to have plenty of fuel for both cars all day long. Next, me and the turd barrels restock the shelves of the trailer for brake clean and motor oil and various supplies that we need to keep the cars running all day and we had to have a staff meeting again the next thing we needed to do was check oil in the generator and hook the trailer up to the dually then we could load up pit vehicles and finally load the cars up and of course I've always got helpers. As we were loading up the cars, Billy put the S10 on the open trailer, the Falcon went in the big trailer, and Tommy and Vicky were still hauling out water, coolers, and food to keep everybody fed and hydrated all day long. The little Falcon fit in the trailer very nice, and of course the dogs were ready to go before anybody else. Once they get in a the dually, they won't come out. Tommy was out first. He was third pair down in the right-hand lane and was sleeping on the light but luckily the little blazer in the left-hand lane got loose and he drove him around him on the big end. So Tommy made it through first round. Billy was up next. Billy was seventh pair down in the left-hand lane and he was paired up with this little Mustang out of Detroit, Michigan. Now they had told Billy that they'd blown the engine up the night before testing. They worked all night long, put a whole nother engine in this car it was untested and untuned, and as you can watch here, the car would barely stay running, the drivers feathering the throttle to keep the car running the whole time. I could see they were having some problems over there, so I kept a close eye on them and made sure they were ready before I brought Billy in. Once they gave me the thumbs up, I brought Billy in and turned him loose. Unfortunately, the little truck spun the tire on the hit. Billy pedaled it, but by the time he got back on the throttle and got the truck rolling, it was just a little too late. Billy was rolling down on top of him pretty hard on the finish line, but lost by inches. Tough way to lose, but as luck would have it, Mother Nature was about to have her way with us anyway. The storm clouds were rolling in really fast as big tire class was finishing up. And it wasn't long after that, torrential downpours. Once it quit raining, or at least slowed down, everybody come out of the trailers and we were waiting to hear what the call was gonna be for the race. Turbo John happened to stop by and he was showing Billy some things on the Holly system and giving him some pointers on the laptop. Eventually, the race was called for rain. So a group of us all got together, went out to eat, and visited with each other while we were all together at the same time. So, unfortunately, yesterday got cut short. Um, we were really excited that Tommy made it through first round. That was really cool. 
Unfortunately, Billy lost first round, but it was a wash anyway. But uh, congratulations to those guys with the Mustang. They'd blown that engine up the night before and worked their butts off and probably drew one of the most undesirable people uh, that they could have drawn for first round and still came out on top. So congratulations to those guys. Uh, that's kind of a fairy tale story there to work all night and then take out Billy the Kid off the trailer and literally his home track, like right in our front yard. So I'm sure that was pretty exciting for those guys and they'll never forget it. And uh, I always I always like to congratulate people that work that hard to, to pull off a win like that. That was really cool. So good job to those guys, but we'll be looking for you the next time. <laughs> anyway, uh, last night, we uh, went in the house and brought the laptop in for the Falcon and went through some of the data. Data, like we've got data now, like we can say we got data. That's really cool. Uh, but anyway, we went through some of the data <clears throat> and the converter slippage issue. Uh, I don't necessarily think it's the converter itself. Uh, I believe that there is a problem internally in the transmission because there's a line pressure sensor on it uh, and uh, the line pressure is going all over the place. It's not not very good. Um, so we believe that there's some problems internally in the transmission. So the plan is we're going to go ahead and get the power glide pulled out of the Falcon, hopefully tonight, if not tonight, tomorrow. Uh, we're going to get that transmission pulled out. We're going to take it up to Dion Vickers at Vickers Performance Transmissions, the guy that does all our transmission work. I've already messaged Dion. He's ready and waiting on it. We're going to take it up there, drop it off, have Dion go through the power glide in the Falcon, check everything out, make sure everything's okay, correct any problems that he finds, and we're going to put the transmission back in the Falcon, most likely with the current stator combination that's in it now, because the converter slippage is 35% early in the run, but towards the end of the run, it's all the way down to 9 or 10%, so that's not too bad. But the line pressure drops dramatically after it leaves the starting line for some reason. And I think that line pressure drop is the reason that we're, we're having this uh, converter slippage issue or whatever slippage issue we've got. We're not really sure yet what it is, but we've definitely got something going on in the transmission. So we're going to take that thing out, take it up to Vickers, uh, have Dion go through it. Whatever it needs will get done. And from there, we shall move forward with the Falcon. The truck is really, really good. However, we are having a little bit of a problem with, I think, the air fuel ratio monitor. I think, I'm not 100% certain, but I think the air fuel ratio readout on the dash is showing leaner than what it actually is because I've put a lot of jet to the carburetor. It's, I'm running a lot of fuel through this engine, but it's still showing lean and I just don't think it's right. So we're gonna order a new C, uh, O2 sensor for the air fuel ratio monitor in the truck. And we're gonna hold off on doing any more tuning on the truck until after we get that situation handled. Because right now, I think I've got so much fuel to it that it's blubbering rich when it leaves and it shouldn't be doing that. It wasn't doing that until we jetted it up and we jetted it up because this air fuel ratio monitor shows that it's lean. And I think we're just chasing our tails here at the moment with the truck. So that's the current situation on the truck and the Falcon. We'll see how things go from here. <laughs> 